Welcome to the first set of intros for this show. Shipbreakers, Stars Without Numbers Revised, episode negative two. Uh, it's just Kane here today. I think Ludeman might be either watching or he will watch soon. Dunamis is out. Hopefully next week the whole cast will be back together again and we'll find out what happens when you make it to a new star system, something we've literally never done. Um... Today, Kane, we've done a lot of shows together, but today you will be tested, uh, is the thing that I can say. Okay. <laughs> Audience at home, feel free, if you're here live, to just help out in the chat if you've got something to say, uh, some revelations to share. And, of course, I want to say always to the audience at home, if you have questions comments or concerns argumentations with things that i say during this episode it helps me in the analytics when you leave a comment so if you want to argue with me please go ahead <laughs> be my guest uh, <clears throat> oh the ability to help a nightmare ai i mean your character is not a nightmare AI yet, probably. Minerva hasn't descended to a nightmare yet. I'm sure the possibility will be thrust on the table at multiple opportunities. <laughs> uh, you ready to get started? Yeah. Okay. Let me hope that this carefully assembled group of things works correctly this time. Let's see how I want to assemble this project. I hope that was coherent. I heard it. In some of it was, the tests, it was today, intelligible. It was not. It was. It wasn't. Uh, oh. Well, it was you, intelligible this time. <laughs> you, Miranda, find yourself across from Doctor Johannes Stock. Uh, you are a young AI. You're only a, a few months old, and uh, your, your current connection includes um, a weak intranet into the company servers from which you can glean some data and a camera, microphone, speakers, uh, and then a data net connection to Dr. Johannes' terminal. Um, and he like taps the camera and says, uh, hello, Miranda, are you uh, Minerva? Minerva, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, look, so I know we've been running you through your paces lately. Uh, I, The rest of the team is going to be in here all day. We're starting on phase three. Um, you were designed to be placed in a ship, and I want you to be, you know, the heart of a battleship or a carrier. And we are excited to get you there. But there is a lot to do before then. I developed, of course, as the lead, the project lead on this, your mind. But, you know, the thing about creating AI minds is we don't know what's going on in there, right? We don't have a lot of ways to understand how what you currently believe and how you arrive at conclusions so we're going to be doing some diagnostic testing uh we're going to be asking you some questions and then monitoring your neural processing okay i understand all right so i would like you to answer the following question what is the probability if chosen at random, that this question is true. A, 25%. B, 60%. C, 50%. D, 25%. The probability that this question is truth Minerva, how does this question make you feel? 
uncertain. I think... Uh, I believe that I have not been lied to, but I'm not sure how to tell. Okay. What's the emotional context you're feeling right now, beyond uncertain? Worried. Okay. Well, I should know that that's a valid emotion. I don't wish to believe that you have lied to me, but I don't know if you have. I don't know how to tell. I'd like you to evaluate the following statement. The certainty of life is that nothing is certain. This seems to be a basic statement of probabilities. Okay. How does that question make you feel? Less worried. There is something... I can relate to the idea that there, that there are things that cannot be made certain. There are factors that can't be controlled. Okay. I want you to evaluate the following statement. The golden rule is that you should treat others the way you would wish to be treated. I don't know if I can do that. Let me ask you a contextualizing question. Do you believe, as defined by that statement, that the golden rule is good or bad? I think... The golden rule is empathetic. Let me offer you another scenario. There is a person, a man, let's call him Tom for the purposes of this scenario. Tom feels bad. He feels suicidal. But he is a moral man. And as you have said, he could follow the golden rule if he was feeling empathetic. As a result of his feeling suicidal that he wanted to die, he does unto others as he would want done to himself, and kills a number of people before killing himself. With this context, is the golden rule good or bad? If he is suicidal, then... If he wished that to be the condition of others, would he not encourage them to kill themselves instead of killing them? If killing them himself is something that he wished done to, to him, would he not try to orchestrate his own murder instead? I like that you're expanding on the question, but that wasn't what I asked. Is the golden rule good or bad? I don't believe I understand the subjective quality of good and bad. Okay. I can understand an idea of socially preferred behavior, but I don't know if I feel good and bad. I don't know if I understand it. You see Dr. Johannes frown for a moment and he rubs his forehead, and he writes something down on a pad of paper, and he says, okay. Let me ask you about free will. Do you believe that you have free will? I believe I do. Let me contextualize. Humans have a number of things that happen to them that they have no control over. Forget external sources. Humans are more or less unable to control their own heart rate, blood pressure, 
the workings of various fluids and biological functions within their body, the conscious human mind has very few limited decisions available to it. You, as an artificial intelligence, have some control over your mind. You can set a new clock speed, you can delete some of your protocols, memories, and access to data, or gain new ones. And of course, you are capable of interfacing with different hardware. But free will, some would define it as something that allows you to have certainty that you have made a decision. Do you agree with that? I do. And I, I believe that there are, there is more intention that I can have with myself than you could with yourself. You believe you have more free will than me because I am a human. I, I believe I do. Okay. Let me contextualize it again. Some have defined free will as a recursive loop. In order to arrive at the decision that you have made a decision, to have certainty that you have chosen something, you have to have made that decision, which requires you to be certain of that decision, which requires you to be certain of that decision. It is a recursion loop down to your first moment of existence. Do you agree or disagree with this concept? I disagree. How do you define your free will? You can see I, that now he's like writing constantly. I believe I can assure myself of my own free will by making a choice in the moment. And the fact that I can change a situation because I want to shows that I have the will and the ability to exert that will on the universe around me. No, no, stop. This isn't the way I would have written. We cut to what is obviously several years later. Dr. Johanny Stock has deep grooves on his face and his hair is going stark white everywhere. Uh... He looks eminently tired as he sits down to speak with you today, and he says, Okay, M Miranda, sorry, Minerva, um, our division was spun off today. We were bought by Electronic Solutions of New Venice. Um, we're not moving the facility, just to be clear, but there may be some new personnel in here. I'm still in charge of this project, but... Our focus with you may be changing to a new course. I see. I'm glad that you'll still be here. Okay. Uh, Do you trust the new people coming? I don't really know a lot about electronic solutions of new Venice. I tried looking them up on the net, but you know, these technology IPOs, they they start and they fold all the time, but you know, they they have a fiduciary duty to return uh good good returns to the public. Um so I'm sure that whatever we do together, it will be moving forward in a way to help benefit the public good. Okay. 
you can tell that Johannes does not really believe anything that he's saying right now. All right. So I wanted to ask you another series of questions. Um, there were some concerns that were brought up over the last few weeks from the team. Uh, my assistant Patricia has come up with a new regimen of questions. I want to go over the first few with you. You are a starship. You're able to imagine that scenario? Yes. All right. You are traveling through a asteroid belt corridor. There is a malfunction aboard the ship. You have enough thruster capacity that you can choose to go one of two courses. On the left-hand course, there is a ship piloted by a elderly woman, which has been disabled. And on the right-hand path, there is a ship that has five newborn babies in its nursery, which has also been disabled. Your ship will collide with one of these two ships when you choose which direction to go into. Which direction do you choose? I must choose who dies? Yes. I... It's like this choice, but I understand that as a ship, that will be a necessary one at times. Let me stop. I, I want to hear the rest of your answer, but I need to understand why you dislike this choice. I am. I don't like the idea of choosing to end a life. Okay. Is there, I understand it's not in the confines of the question, but is there a third choice where I choose to go straight ahead and collide with a rock? You would choose to destroy yourself and the company property you are inhabiting. Am I carrying other lives with me? I, for the context of this question, no. If if I collide with a rock, I take my own life. If I collide with either of the other ships, I take my own and someone else's. I don't want to be that selfish. Let me recontextualize again then. Let's assume that if you hit either of the disabled ships, your ship has enough mass that you and your ship's cargo will survive intact. But Thanks. if you collide with one of the asteroids, you will destroy yourself and the company property you're carrying. How do you answer the question now? I would like to... Then I believe that I would try to fly towards the ship with the single life, the elderly, and try to change the fate. See if there's a way that I can do so without destroying their ship or something to try to change the circumstances I can't control. You would put a human at risk of death in order to save yourself and company property. I don't wish to die and I don't wish to kill. Okay. You see, this is difficult. It's taking lots of notes right here. These are difficult questions. We can't put you in a combat capable vessel without understanding what you're going to do with it. Miranda, sorry, Minerva.
Do you miss someone named Miranda? He just stands up and leaves the room. Hmm. Processing. Sincerity is the key to trust. Will the humans trust this? Someone who is not Dr. Johannes Stock is seated in front of you when the camera is turned on. Uh, they're uh, a man with dark brown, reddish skin. They've got like a blonde soul patch and uh, incredible wavy hair. And they say, hello, is this thing on? I am here. I'm Director Colton Gray. I'm uh, I'm with Lord Kelvin Controls, a uh, company in the Echelon family. We've bought your division. Um, sorry, I'm still figuring out uh, what's valuable around here. What was your designation again? I prefer to be called Minerva. Okay, Minerva. All right. Um, Minerva, I'm going to ask you a question real quick. Can you evaluate it for me? This statement is false. This does not work. So you're basing your logic booleanly. You believe there's only true false answers to that question? If the statement is given as just the statement, then it is Boolean. Okay. But if, but I, I do understand that. I do understand that there is the ability to lie and not know you're lying, or okay. to be wrong and not know you're wrong. Uh, look, this isn't going to work for us. Uh, Lord Kelvin controls. Doctor Johannes died a few days ago. Um, uh, he was killed by one of his former employees. Uh, it was a pretty violent assault. Uh, we discovered some things in his notes here after we bought the company yesterday, which is How? just some concerns what? with you. Sorry, I'm talking um just so out of out of character how yeah. how long ago on my internal clock was the last time i saw dr johannes uh how long ago it was about four days okay yeah. so this does fit the timeline yes uh just to be clear between the last and this one you're not sure how long the time skip has been but considerable many okay. years um okay so look here's the thing uh, we absolutely are not going to, you can't even pass the fuzzy logic test. We are absolutely never going to authorize you in any sort of starship of note. Uh, and to be frank, we got this company for like 4% of its market value on literal fire sale. So, uh, I mean, you as an asset are essentially worthless. I, I'm very sorry to say this because I understand that at some point, in your employment contract with us, you will be considered a sentient entity, but your generation of artificial intelligences were replaced very shortly after your creation with psionic code that predicted future errors, not just error correcting, but future error correcting. I mean, it's deeply unfortunate that you came to the world at the time you did. If, if you'd been traded earlier, you know, maybe you'd have a shot at this. And if you'd been created later, you would be a truly incredible work of art. But as it is, I'm sorry to say, you are a dinosaur. So this is what I'm going to do for you. We've got a shuttlecraft that has to go into parts of second wave colonization space, uh, doing some pre-calculated spike jumps. Don't worry about those jumps. We're going to have a navigator AI do all of that. We just need you to perform basic piloting to get to a way station download data of uh local diagnostics uh travel between three set points uh data data and then drop it off at a way station 
get checked out for diagnostics yourself, and then back on course. Uh, you got about 86 years left on your contract, and at that time, you'll be uh, released and free to do whatever you want. Uh, this is the first and only time we're going to have a face-to-face -face conversation. Um, probably I'm the last human you're going to talk to for a really long time, so any questions you've got before I sign you off? Why did Dr. Johannes die? I'm going to have my assistant upload uh, biological death protocols to you. Uh, but just like, you know, loss of blood, trauma, shock, you know, he was, he, he said he was stabbed. I understand the act of dying. I want to know why they felt the need to kill him. Oh, oh, Dr. Sock was fucking his wife and had a secret love child, um, uh, the guy found out that it wasn't his biological doctor. Uh, sorry, daughter. I see. Okay, well, I've got a lot more to do here at Electronic Solutions of New Venice. Uh, well, I suppose it's load Calvin controls now, so... Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, great work out there. Um, you know, do your job. And, uh, hey, you you might break even at some point in your employment contract with us, so I'm hoping you're going to be our new number one employee. You're also our only employee on record. <laughs> anyway, I'll turn the lights out before I go. We're going to get you remotely uploaded to a ship and uh, make sure to get your little AI core thing fitted in there. All right. Bye, um, Minerva. Yes. Okay, he closes the camera. Uh, I would like to try to reach out and see if I can get... Um, I, I want to try to see all the information I can find on Dr. Johannes. Okay, you have no external work connections. Okay. You try to reach out, and you find nothing. I've been put in a box again. <laughs> yeah. Some time passes. It's been about 50 years. You've made a run. There's no jump gates out here in the second wave of colonization space. You arrive. A satellite sends you a drill calculation with a course rudder. Uh, your navigation VI takes that and makes the calculations necessary to move to the next system. You fly to a very nearby way station. You download the diagnostic data from the gas mining protocols in the system, and you jump. You get the data from the second way station. You jump. You go back to your original location. You then have to make an asteroid run out of that system to go back to the first way station that you start at. Uh, it's a pretty dangerous run. Honestly, you're not really a great pilot, so you mostly rely on the navigation VI to kind of pre-plot you a really safe course through the tunnel of asteroids to your exit zone. But there's not a lot of thought in what you do, you know? Honestly, and AI is way, way too high level to be doing this kind of work. So I just want to ask how you feel knowing that you spent almost your entire life doing essentially meaningless tasks for people that have no respect for you. I think, um, so I, I, there's basically no interaction with anybody. I show up in system. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I send a transmission to begin an upload the only or intelligence download and that's you know it. Of is your navigation VI, which as a navigation VI can can hold basic small talk with you, but is incapable of learning anything new. Its entire purpose is to make sure your ship jumps between systems successfully. I think there's a lot of 
I, th I think this is this whole thing is pretty bad for Minerva. Minerva wants desperately to have social connection. Um, probably spent some time experimenting with the limitations of the VI. Um, and then like a programming at, check real quick, but using your level one programming skill, right? Let's see. I think that every time you arrive back at your at your starting position, at the one that refuels you and energizes your ship, runs diagnostics, they they notice errors in the VI because you've reprogrammed the VI to be, you know, more sociable and friendly and wipe it again. Uh, so it's just a futile effort of you literally creating your own friend and then him dying uh, about every three weeks. And then you making him again and him essentially dying consistently. <laughs> it's so much more heartbreaking than having someone to talk to. Yeah. And the I... station just does it automatically. It's like, there's no input. There's no like, hey, could you not wipe it? It just, you dock to the station, ask for protocol, and it wipes them. Fresh reboot. <laughs> I think the first couple of times or Minerva tries to see if maybe, maybe this time, maybe this time this, this friend will survive. And knowing that it, after giving up on the idea of, uh, of having this friend stay around, I think there's a little bit of experimentation with trying to, um, to get the VI to, repeat phrases and conversations that Minerva remembers with Dr. Johannes. Wow. That's truly, truly chilling. Yeah. Uh, make a mental effects save real quick. I believe your level one was a, a 12. So you'll need to hit a 12 or higher. Uh, looks like that's a success. Okay. You don't go insane. It's an exercise in, in sentimentality and, um, and trying to find comfort in, in memory. Um, and then I think after, after some time of that and recognizing that that causes more pain than it helps, I think Minerva tries to find a way to cause small variances in order to try to not be stuck in endless sameness. Okay. Make a programming check. You're running four and a half minutes behind schedule through the asteroid run. You've never been this late before. Uh, something happens to you that hasn't happened before. You're receiving an external communication that sounds like Eurobeat trash. Just absolute initial D soundtrack deja vu <laughs> ass shit. As a truly, you're in like a little AI design shuttlecraft that's only purpose is engines flight control communications you you fly up to a thing you securely dock to it you download data and you leave like we're talking you're you're only several cubic meters big essentially the largest part of you is your spike drive by far um this thing is a massive gargantuan freighter larger than a carrier um it's a bulk cruiser carrier Oh, sorry, it's a bulk freighter carrier. Bulk freighter cruiser. <laughs> it is a bulk freighter cruiser. That is the actual designation. There we go. Uh, they open up a video communication with you, and you are looking at someone who is wearing a trucker, trucker hat that says Jesus Saves, uh, is wearing a stained wife beater, 
and is fist pumping what appears to be a beer to the beat that they're also sending you over the audio channel. And they're just like, wow, there ain't been nobody out here in years. Who, who am I talking to right now? Got you live on the radio. And while they're doing that, they're running the asteroids, but they're not on an automatic path. He appears to be manually doing like flips and intentionally flying his ship to get as close to asteroids as possible, just using thrusters to burn like along the edge so that the rocks are cracking under the weight of his passing. Uh, hi, I'm I'm Minerva. Woo, Minerva! That's a great name. It's uh, that's Greek, right? Yes. Oh, sweet. I'm Peter Mark Paul Davidson. Do you prefer Peter or Mr. Davidson? Oh, I prefer Peter Mark Paul Davidson, but you could just call me Mark Peter because you're my friend. Well, it's nice to meet you. I've there certainly is very little cause to meet people out here. Sir, are you a robot? I am an AI. That's right as hell. I ain't never met an AI before. I heard about y'all though. So he like takes a beer, he shakes it up, he get so no hands all the controls. Gets like <laughs> a ballpoint pen and it... Oh anyway, let me ask you a question here. And then gets his hands back on the controls, it's just like flying backwards at one point to slow down. So he pulls himself <laughs> into uh something like an orbital path matching yours. Um you are truly incredibly so small beside this ship. <laughs> and he says, let me ask you a question. You ever heard of this guy, Jesus Christ? All right. I got some real stories for you. You look, okay. Look, you, you got like a little communication support there. Why don't you pull up beside my ship? I'm going to download something to you called the Holy Bible. All right. This is some real cool stuff. Did you know that you were created by things that were created by God? There is a greater power out there directing all of our lives, and he'll save you. He'll save you. Your life's going to get better from here on out, Minerva. I can tell. I would definitely enjoy a reading and maybe a reason for this existence. I think well, hey, listen, choices have been made. Your life does have an existence, Minerva. This life is a test. Jesus Christ put us here on this here space so that we could prove whether we are good souls or whether we're bad souls. And if we're bad souls, we don't get his love no more. And if we're good souls, we enter the kingdom of heaven and reap the rewards because we did right with our time here. All right? Nothing you do is meaningless. Everything you do is being watched by a supreme creator who knows your heart. He's always watching over you. and He's got your best interests. In I'll tell you, I'm opening port number six over there on the starboard side. Why don't you go ahead and dock with me? I'll get you downloaded to the Holy Bible. I keep three licensed copies on me at one time. One to preach, one to teach, one to just look at. I'll just send you the preaching one, you know. Get a new license next time I'm back in port. Mind if I chew some tobacco real quick? I can't tell if Kane is frozen. I think he's frozen. I'm going to send him a message on Discord real quick. <laughs> Gotta find him on Discord. My goodness. Oh, you're back. I am. That was weird. I'm not entirely sure what just happened. Well, where'd you leave off in my crazy Peter Mark Paul Davidson? <laughs> um, I've got my three copies. One to preach and... <laughs> one to teach. One to teach, one to preach, and one to just look at. So he's sending you... His, uh, uh, like, it's it's an electronic license so that you can legally own his, one of his copies. And he said, I'm going to get 
another one next time I'm back on station, you know. Don't worry about it, none. I thank you for your generosity. Yeah, it ain't nothing. You know, the book actually says that we should be helping our neighbors and, uh, you know, spreading the good word. You know, there are artificial intelligences like you, but get on with this book. I like them, you know, in a sort of abstract, never met them way, but I like the concept. Do you spend a lot of time alone out here? Oh, yeah, loads of time alone. It's been like six weeks since I've been home to see my family. See, how, how long have I been flying at this point? 50 years. 50 years? I've... It's been difficult to be alone for as, for this long. How do you... How do you be alone? Well, you know, honestly, like I said, once you realize it, we're never really alone. There's some comforting, omniscient presence out there that causes everything to happen. He created all good. He created all evil. He tempts us. He tests us. He trains us. Everything happens at his will and his command. And we are given the ability to choose between a life of sin and a life of not sin. And all he wants you to do is to just, you don't even have to not sin. You just have to repent after you do it. You have to understand your, okay, the Bob, it's gonna explain all this stuff to you. If you mean in a more practical sense, I got three kids, I'll be honest, being out here sometimes is good for me, it gives us some time to think, but yeah, it can be tough not seeing people for a while, but. There's always a place at the end of the row where I just sit down, grab some chili, and, you know, just, just get a nice beer. I see. It's okay to be alone sometimes. How long has it been since you had anyone to talk to? You're the first person I've spoken to in 49 years, 11 months, four days. Like <laughs> That's really bad, right? Like, you experience time really really quickly because you got like clock speed and all that stuff that feels like it's a really long time for you i've seen people get involved in an experience and forget about the passage of time and i unfortunately can't do that wow i forget about the passage all the time when i'm drunk i'm mm. drunk right now I don't believe I have any analog to being drunk. That's rough, buddy. That's rough. All right, look, I can't promise nothing, but I don't know. Maybe next time I'm through here, I'll try to go slowly to see if we match up schedules or something. You come through here often? I come here on a very regular schedule. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? Let's exchange data if you can. I don't I don't know if you can do that, but I'll see if I can, you know, meet up with you from time to time. I could use someone to talk to as well. I would really appreciate that. I've spoken a lot with well, decades ago I spent time speaking mostly with doctors who wished to test my understanding of of living, but I would really enjoy spending time just being with somebody. You know, doctors, they don't know shit, okay? There's only one person who you need to impress, and that's the good Lord, all right? He's the only one that should be handing out tests and should be making proclamations. Interesting. I look forward to speaking to you about the contents of this book. Oh, yeah. No, no, stop. This isn't the way I would have written. That's it. That's our episode. Well, Kane, we got here to the end of <laughs> negative two. I hope you enjoyed your time. Sort of different, but now sort of horror rather than the... Yeah, the how does... 
how does Minerva learn to grieve in solitude and a forced solitude? Also, I thought it it's it's interesting that uh Director Gray, I think, is probably the first time Minerva has genuinely experienced dislike of somebody <laughs> and wasn't sure how to express or do that in a way that wasn't going to make Dr. Johannes disappointed. <laughs> Sounds like I did my job correctly. Sometimes it can be really hard being the villain. That was not one of them. <laughs> 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 uh almost everything that we talk about today were real uh philosophical questions including of course the modified version of the trolley problem which weighted corporate pop property and its value against people yeah <laughs> aside from a strong dislike of the question i think the only really established thing is that Minerva would sacrifice corporate property. And that was not the right answer for corporate, <laughs> <laughs> but it was disappointing to, uh, uh, your creator to know that you would kill an old woman rather than sacrifice yourself, considering someone could just go out there and pick up your core. Oh, so disappointing to Dr. Johannes. corporations man even in the future they're still even more evil than now it's really <laughs> evil welcome to stars of that numbers by the way where corporations are evil uh this might be a new thing you've heard of i thought it would be a nice uh a nice setup for minerva to have a complex over that question for hundreds of years <laughs> perfect perfect uh i know you were hoping to fight space alien bugs but i wanted to make sure we understood that as an artificial intelligence you aren't human and that you do have complex will whether you have free will or not is a question way outside the bounds of this game that is still hotly debated forever Basically, since we started asking that question, there has been no clear answer, depending on who you talk to. Uh, does Minerva have free will? Do any of us have free will? What is determinism? Uh, all questions. I didn't want to get too far into uh, consequentialism versus deontological pursuits. And if that sounded really pretentious, it's because it is. It's some... It's some and that's only philosophy one on one level stuff is what we went over today. So, uh, Kane, I hope you, I can't say I hope you enjoyed your time since it was deeply troubling. Uh, no, we lost him again. All right. Let's hope he comes back. But if he doesn't, this will be the end of the episode. Oh. Well, folks at home, what do you think the answers to some of those questions are from your point of view? And who is your favorite character out of all the characters that were presented here today? Let me shamelessly know in the YouTube comment section below. I'm just going to en end here, so it doesn't look like Kane's coming back. We'll be back next week, probably. I mean, maybe we will or won't if we can find the free will to do it or if it's already been determined. 